Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, hello and welcome, you wonderful pet parent. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're talking about, what is today's topic? I know what today's topic is, but let me get the actual headline. Help, help, my cat is fat. Now what, guys? I've been there too, I know, I understand. And there are so many fat cats in the world, in the US for sure. (laughs) Um, And we can do better. So. If you have, if you're just looking at your cat and you're like, oh my gosh, my cat is fat, or maybe you've been to the vet and your vet is like, you really, your cat needs to lose weight. Like we're on the wrong path here. We're going to wind up with some serious diseases, um, obesity induced diseases, which is very, very common in our house cats today. Well, there are things you can do. It, and, and, one of the biggest things we can do is to actually treat our cats like cats, like the animal that they are. And what's really, really interesting about cats is that unlike dogs, unlike dogs, cats are only semi-domesticated. They aren't quite, they're not domesticated in the way that we think of a dog being domesticated. Any domestication that has happened to our house cats is what they have done to themselves. Humans have not done anything in the way of actually intentionally domesticating a house cat. So our house cats are about 99% similar genetically um, to tigers in the wild. So we literally have little wild semi-domestic tigers in our homes. And what's really important is that we treat them this way. And for the majority of of us, we're not, we're just not. We haven't been, we have never been, um, but we need to get back to it. And if you haven't listened to any of the previous podcasts on cats, back in September, um, my uh, YouTube and Rumble channels, we did a whole month of videos on how to make our cats happy and healthy. And one of the things we can do is first and foremost, feeding them a species appropriate diet. Um, But when, when we think about feeding our cats a species appropriate diet, one of the first things we need to do in this transition period is to get rid of the all day buffet. And this is something that I think is more prevalent in our cats these days than possibly even our dogs, although there are quite a few dogs that still get the food left down all day for them. And this dry kibble um, that, that we feed our pets, and today we're specifically talking about our cats, our cats are obligate carnivores. That means they have to have meat to survive. There are certain nutrients, amino acids, that our cats, cats in general, cannot make on their, their bodies can't make on their own. They can only get them from actual real meat. More often than not, where your cat is actually getting a lot of these amino acids from is through what they call um, premixes. So these are chemical compounds that are created and they come in a powder form to resemble to mimic the nutrient profiles that are required in our companion animals. So if you're, if you want to learn more about premixes, I've, I've talked about this in the past, but that's basically what it is. These are chemical compounds that are designed to add nutrition back (laughs) to the diet. Um, because when, when you have a kibble product, which is that dry pellet food that most animals are eating, 
most companion animals are eating. In our homes, um, these these foods are high heat processed and this high heat process, they go through generally for four different phases. There is little to no nutrition left in the food. So these premixes have to be added back in. That is just part of why, why it is so important that we realize that as an obligate carnivore, this is not an ideal diet for our cats. One in that it is high, high, like super, super high in carbohydrates. You literally cannot make a dry kibble food without carbohydrates. And these are complex carbohydrates and sugars basically that, that translate into that are turned into sugars in the body. And these are detrimental to an obligate carnivores diet. Um, even, even a, a regular, like a carnivore that isn't an obligate carnivore, meaning they literally could not survive without meat. Um, they still have a, a carnivore, like a dog still has no nutritional need for these complex carbohydrates and sugars. So that is one reason that our cats are so, are getting so, so, so fat. And, and the easiest thing we can do for that is to feed a more species appropriate diet. The other reason that this is such a, a, a terrible, terrible thing to feed our cats is because it keeps our cats in a state of constant dehydration. Our cats need moisture and they, they need moisture from their food. Most cats are not going to drink a lot of water. Um, that is just because that's they're, they're desert animals. They are used to not having access to water and through generation, generation, and generation of um, animal, they have adapted to not drink a whole lot of water, not have that desire to drink a whole lot of water because it isn't available in their natural habitat. So having moisture in their diet is, is how they get moisture in general. Some cats will drink some water and some of mine do too, but it's not enough to, to thrive. Right. Um, so that is one thing, but so getting rid of the, the all day buffet is one of the best things we can do, but taking it a step further. And, and there's one more thing that I want to say about this before we go into taking this a step further. And that is if you are feeding a kibble, a, a dry pellet food to your animal, and your veterinarian is recommending that you switch to a diet food or a prescription food, and if you're watching the video, you're seeing my little quote hands because there's no there, there's no such thing. In fact, next week we're going to talk about prescription diets and hmm, yeah, the truth about prescription diets. Uh, but there is no diet in continuing to feed these dry kibble products to our animals. There's, there's no diet there. Um, meaning there is no, um, we're still feeding them an overabundance of complex carbohydrates, which translate into sugars into the body. So you're not really putting your pet on a diet is basically what I'm getting at. There's calorie restriction, but if your vet or if someone you know, or if you just have the idea that I'm just gonna feed my cat less of what I'm already feeding them, that's really not ideal either because if you are feeding based on the guidelines on that package of food, and you decrease the amount that you feed to less than the recommended amount in that package of food, there is a very, very good possibility that your pet is not receiving adequate nutrition in a day. So while your intentions are great, your intentions are good to restrict the caloric intake, not all calories are the same. If you think about when you look up um, information, say you want to lose weight or you want to go on a diet. How many times have you read that not all calories are created equal, right? They're, they're just not. A calorie from a banana is very different from the calorie from a slice of processed white bread. They're, those are two very different calories. So even though they may, you may find portions of each to have equal 
number of calories, the way your body processes them is very, very different. So all calories are not created equal. All calories are not the same. And so if we just reduce the amount of calories that our pet takes in in a day, there is a possibility uh, that, especially if we're feeding them less than our recommended daily feeding on whatever package of food you are feeding to your animal, they're not getting the, the all of the nutrients in a day that they need. And that can be very detrimental to their health in different ways than just being overweight. So <laughs> when I said getting rid of the all-day buffet and feeding your cat a species-appropriate diet, there is a way that we can kind of take this up a notch. And I definitely recommend that you do this. And that is by feeding our cats in a way that mimics how they would eat in the wild. So, okay, you may not want to go get small animals and let them loose in your house for your cat to run and hunt and, and prey on them and eat them. I get that. That's definitely not what I'm suggesting here, but there are there are activities that we can introduce into our cat's lives. And one of the best ways to do this is by using hunting feeders. So Doc and Phoebe's is one of which that I know. In fact, it's probably the biggest one that I know of. Um, uh, Dr. Liz Bales created this. She was a veterinarian, is a veterinarian, and she has two different kinds of hunting feeders, one for dry foods or freeze-dried foods, and the other one for wet foods. And I have both of them, and, and I love them, and my cats love them. And so what, what we do when we use these hunting feeders and we get rid of the all-day buffet, we take our time to transition our cat to a healthier diet, of course. This is definitely not something that needs to happen overnight or even in a week. It can sometimes take months to transition to a healthier diet. So when we think about cats and how they would naturally act in the wild, how they naturally behave in, in their their environment, whatever the environment that they would be in if they weren't living in our homes. The, a cat spends most of their awake time hunting for food. And if you think about how much of your day your cat is active and playing and hunting for food, how, how much would you say that is? So probably very, very little. So providing these natural, instinctive behavioral opportunities to our cats every day is really, really crucial. And when we think about what our cats like to do to play, what we call play with our cats is actually hunting behavior for them. So if you think about, there are lots of, you know, memes and videos and cartoons online about, you know, cats knocking things off of um, tables and counters. This is this is boredom being expressed in our cats. So providing these opportunities to our cats, one of the best things we can do outside of hunting feeders, which are incredible and wonderful, and I definitely recommend you use with your cats, is just playtime. So if you think if you if you go back to Happy Cat Month, which we did in September 2021. Uh, one of the main things that I really wanted to get across was this idea that every single day, multiple times a day, if at all possible, we want to engage our cat in a sequence of hunt, stalk, kill, eat, clean, sleep. So this is natural, how things naturally work for a cat in the wild. And since our cats are not really domestic, they still very, very, very much need this. Even if they were domesticated, I, I feel like they would still very much need this. And this is how we can engage them in play. Play with your cat the way they like to play. And that's going to engage that hunting and stalking behavior. And at the end, we always need to make sure they win. They, they need to win throughout, but they end with a big win and get that kill at the end. Feed them afterwards, right? Let them clean themselves, which is a natural something they naturally do after they eat. And then they will take a nice long, well-deserved nap. And that's the routine that a cat lives in day in and day out, multiple times a day. And if we aren't, we aren't affording them this, um, yeah, they're definitely going to get bored and they're definitely going to 
eat and eat and eat and overeat, especially if they are grazers and they have an all day buffet, um, which we definitely need to pick up, which I was talking about at the beginning. And what's really interesting um, is that there have been studies on cats that show that unlike other animals like dogs, even if a dog had access to food all day, if their you know regular food was down all day, they still would prefer to work for their food, which is something that we talk about in, in dog training, right? Letting our dogs work for their food. A dog, for instance, is, is an animal that would still prefer to work for their food. So even if they have food down, they're still gonna engage with you and they're still gonna train with you and work for that food reward. Cats, on the other hand, um, through research, through scientific studies, have been shown that that is not the case. Um, they, if given the opportunity of working on a food puzzle or just having a, a bowl full of food, they are gonna go for that bowl full of food all the time. Whereas a dog, for instance, is gonna work on that puzzle because they want to work for their food. Um, now, if the cat doesn't have access to the all day buffet, of course they want, like they, they're they all in with for working for their food because that's how their body is, that's how they're, they're built, that's how they're wired. So, you know, our cats are very, much, very, very bored. So that is, those are the two big things, providing a species appropriate diet and providing them with the play necessary to engage their brain and environmental enrichment for your cat, which is where those hunting feeders come in. So with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and end today's podcast. That That's really where we're going with you get a diagnosis or you're looking at your cat and saying, my goodness, my cat is too fat. What am I going to do? Also, know that this is not something that's going to happen overnight. We do not want our cat to drop a ton of weight really quickly. That in itself is very physically dangerous to your cat. This is something that we want to slowly, incrementally help our cat lose weight um, by implementing these new routines in our cat's life and slowly transitioning them to a healthier, more species appropriate diet. So with that, I am I'm highly going to highly encourage you to go back to the he Healthy Happy Cats month, which was September 2021 um, on YouTube or Rumble, wh wherever you prefer to get your videos. The videos are all up there. Um, and I kind of did a summary on the podcast. So at the end of I think it was the end of September, I kind of summarized everything into one podcast. So you can go check that out as well if you haven't already listened to that podcast. With that, I'm going to wish you and your pets so much love and joy this new year I or, or whatever time of year you happen to be listening to this podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Just by the fact that you're listening to this podcast, I know you are an incredible pet parent and you want nothing but the best for your pets, which puts you head and tails above a lot of others. So with that, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with me. So much love, so much love going out to your kitty. Um, and of course, if you have dogs, we love them too. All right, guys, I will talk to you in the next podcast. Bye. Oh, oh.